Hello friends, welcome to yet another session of our CIA part 1. The topic which we shall be learning today is called risk management. So if I talk about the importance of this topic in examination, it is very high. So uh, since the syllabus has been changed in CIA, the weightage on this topic, risk management, will be very, very high. It could be as high as 35% weightage on this topic only. Now, uh, most of the students really feel uh, uncomfortable when it comes to risk management part. And I have seen a lot of students uh, facing trouble while attempting the exam questions as well. The trick for this topic is that you have to be conceptually very clear. Uh, difficulty wise, this topic is just not difficult at all. In fact, it's very, very interesting topic. It's just that how we understand this concept and how we perceive the question in exam. That's the only key how to deal with this topic called risk management. So let's start our journey and understand what is risk, how company deals with it, and there are different frameworks on it. So the topic which we shall be learning under this topic is called ISO 31000, which is related to risk management. We shall be talking about the basic concept of risk, certain terms related to it, and then COSO's ERM framework. So all these will be part of this session where we'll discuss in detail what is risk, how companies deal with it, who's having what responsibility when it comes to risk management. So let's start with this. Before I really get into this, let me uh, take you through certain terms which we generally use in this topic. The first topic is called risk appetite. And then second topic, is risk tolerance. So mostly students get stuck and some of, uh, of you would perceive these two words as one of the same. But let me tell you that these two are having some differences. Both are related to risk. However, there is a difference between what you call risk tolerance and risk appetite. Risk appetite is a very broader term. However, risk tolerance is narrower and more well defined than risk appetite so uh, let me put it that way risk appetite is more of a generic term however risk tolerance is more specific now let me give you an example a company doesn't want to change the technology because if they change the technology probably their revenue might decline now here I'm talking about risk appetite. Company wants to take risk, company doesn't want to take risk. So that is all about risk appetite. Risk tolerance as to, in the same example, when the company says that if they change the technology, their well-defined first 10 customers who are giving them most of the revenues will be lost or cut down by about 10%. Here, I'm talking about risk tolerance. So under risk appetite, we talk generic. That my revenue might decline if I use this technology. However, in risk tolerance, I'm saying that my first 10 big customers, the revenue from them will be declined by another 10%. So that's more of a risk tolerance. So these are two words which we should be very clear with. What is the meaning of risk tolerance and risk appetite? Now let's understand the risk a little bit more in well-defined manner. So now let's understand what type of risks do we have? When I say we, we as a company and we as an auditor. So there is something called audit risk. Audit risk is equal to inherent risk. multiplied by control risk multiplied by detection risk. These are three important words to be understood. When I say audit risk, audit risk comprise of three type of risk. The first is inherent risk. Inherent risk is a risk before setting any internal control. So let's assume a situation where company has not defined any internal control per se. 
and the risk exist, we call that inherent risk. Inherent risk may be depending on a lot of factors such as nature of work, the industry the company works in, the type of management and so on. Now that's what we call inherent risk. Control risk is a risk that the controls in the company, the internal controls in the company either have failed or they were not sufficient to take care of those risks. Now that risk is called control risk. And finally comes detection risk. The detection risk is a risk that the company's policies, procedures are not able to detect the major risk and they are not able to handle it. That's what we call detection risk. So in audit risk comprise of three major risks. When I say inherent risk, the risk which is before setting any risk, setting any control. The control risk is a risk where the controls have failed. So internal control are not working the way they were supposed to be. And finally comes detection risk that your detective techniques could not detect the risk. And of course, the final risk comes as a residual risk. Residual risk is a risk which is after setting all controls. There can be still probability that some risk may still be there inside the company. Even if you have taken all the processes, even if you have taken all the measures, the risk still exists. We call them residual risk. Right? So these are the type of risk what we have to deal with. So now what we have understood is we have understood two important concepts called risk tolerance, risk appetite. Then we understood the various type of risks. Now when we have understood, so let's understand how company deals with risk. The major responsibility of risk management lies with whom? It of course lies with the management, the leadership. It is not the primary responsibility of an auditor to manage the risk. Please mind it. So whether we talk about management or we talk about the board, they have a primary responsibility to manage the risk. The task of an auditor is just to help them. And being an internal auditor, we do the consulting. And when we do consulting, we help them strengthen the risk management techniques and frameworks. But that's never a primary responsibility of an auditor. Right? So before we get into who has what responsibility, first understand certain risk management steps. So now let's discuss what steps company takes. So risk management steps. Let's start with the first step. And remember again that these steps are taken by whom? the management, the company, the board. The first step is called risk identification. We know no risk, no gain. Every company has to take a lot of risk. The risk could be regulatory, the risk could be legal, the risk could be competitive threat, the risk could be technical, operational, any kind of risk might exist inside the company. But a good management is a management who can see the risk before it arises. So the first and most important step in the company is to identify the risk. There could be certain events which triggers the risk. Some could be leading event, some could be existing event, some could be escalation. For example, there is some schedule maintenance required. It's more than four or five days that it has uh, passed due and the maintenance has not been done. Now, this event is called escalation. It's high times, needs to be escalated. But that's an event, a leading event. There was a scheduled maintenance of a machine which has not been done. However, it is leading to another problem that there could be a breakdown. So the company management should have a capability to identify those events when the risk arises. It, as I said, it could be any kind of risk, a technical, operational, legal, regulatory or otherwise. 
So here the steps generally a company should follow is called SWOT. SWOT is something which we can use in various situations. Here I'm talking about SWOT for risk identification. SWOT stands for strength, weaknesses, opportunities and threats. So a company can put it into four quadrants. Remember that strength and weaknesses are always internal to the company. O's and T's, the opportunities and threats are always external to the company. A company doesn't work in isolation, right? So when company deals with the environment, they have to deal with all kind of risk, whether it's internal or an external. So these are two internal factors. These are two external factors. Let me give you some example. If I say dishonest employees, can you tell me which category they would fall into? Of course, a weakness inside the company, not a good part for the company. So I'm talking about weakness. A satisfied customer, a satisfied customer may be a strength of the company. However, the, this strength can lead into O. One satisfied customer will go out and tell 10 more customer that I'm happy with it. It will become an opportunity for the company. Competition, primarily considered as a threat. In some situation, it could be an opportunity also. A government's policy. A government's tax policy could either be a threat, could be an opportunity, entirely depend on the nature of the work. So this is how a company has to identify the risk first. Remember uh, that S and O's are need to be reg uh, monitored regularly as well. It is a misconception to understand that only T's and W's are something which company has to bother about. No, that's not right. The S can convert into weakness very fast. So is O converting into T. But also, if company doesn't know how to use their S and O, the company is not able to meet their potential uh, what they are supposed to, right? So ideally, company should know what is their strength, what's their weakness, opportunities and threats. And this is how company identifies their risk. Ideally, a good governance is a governance which identifies the risk before it arises, right? So that's what the first step we call risk identification. In risk identification, we majorly focus on event identification, correct? The step number two, the risk mapping. If I use a corporate term, it's also called heat map. You might be working in a company, you might have created those heat map, let's say in three colors, red, amber, green. That's nothing but a heat map. Here in risk mapping also, we use the same term. Primarily, this term was actually taken by Matt from a Met department where uh, the heat map are used to create for climate changes. But now the corporates use these terms quite a lot. So when I say heat map, I have to create a graph. No company, no matter how big that is, the company cannot manage every single risk at the same time. Right, so company has to prioritize. The company has to prioritize as to which risk needs to be managed first. That's where we prioritize them through risk mapping. So we do something called risk map where we see how much is the probability of something happening. And if it occurs, what will be the outcome? Correct? So on OX axis, I'm putting probability or likelihood. On OY axis, I'm putting the outcome. Probability tells us whether something will happen or it wouldn't happen. When I say outcome, so if it happened, what will be the consequences? Now let's categorize into three parts. Low, medium, high. Low, medium, high. Right? Now, company will see as per their nature of work, as per their industry, as per their operational difficulties, how much is the likelihood of have something happening? And if it occurs, what will be the consequences? 
some might fall into high high category some may be low and high and so on so this is how we map right now if you could have seen this in a colored form probably would have seen three colored red amber green when i say red anything which falls under high high is absolute red and something in red needs immediate attention by management so management has to really really see this now high time something in amber color is something which falls under m category it might not need as immediate attention as high but it is still happening quite a lot so you have to really focus on this as well then comes low which we generally put as a green color this low doesn't need attention right now everything is fine but that does not mean that this will always remain fine correct you never know when l converts into m and m to high a small example a debtor into 0 to 30 aging falls under which category hello till 30 days company did not bother to collect the money it has already been moved into 30 days above m category very soon once the 90 days are crossed it is almost very uncertain that you'll ever get your money back i'm already talking about it so that's where green amber red it converts very fast it needs constant monitoring so in step number 1 we identified the risk step number 2 was for risk mapping where we map the risk and we see where do we stand whether it needs immediate attention or it can wait correct the step number 3 we call risk mitigation we have identified the risk we know how important it is for handle now it is time for it to mitigate mitigation means handle so you have to resolve the problem right so that's where we use a term called tara tara stands for transfer accept reduce avoid company can use either of this or combination of this to handle the risk when i say transfer the company transfer the risk to someone else the example of transferring could be when you get your life insured so you are transferring your risk to someone else the another example of transferring the risk could be outsourcing when we outsource our processes to someone else we actually transfer our risk to someone else so that's the transfer accepting the risk so for example i know competition is there i can't remove it right i can't eliminate so let's accept the risk and let's try to make our processes better so that we can survive in the competition accepting the risk reducing the risk i know competition threat is there i have to get into innovation so that i can beat the competition i'm reducing the risk avoiding the risk my company would not do anything which carries more of risk let's say china has lot of competition for my product i would not even open any branch in china avoiding the risk company can use any strategy as per their own company's objective strategy and the management's perspective on the risk uh, it's not necessary that we will be using one technique at a time it can be variety of techniques as well for example for some risk we can use transfer for some avoiding for some reducing and so on and the last but absolutely not risk uh, least is monitoring remember risk is just not a static element it will never be a static element risk changes very very fast and the way it changes the way we have to deal with this and all these three first steps needs constant monitoring for example today i have certain risk probably tomorrow i may not have similar one but if you won't monitor how would you get to know or maybe some threat it was not there when i was doing this but now suddenly it has arisen and that's where i could deal with it so is risk mapping today something falls under low category may fall into m and high very fast risk mapping needs monitoring 
the technique to deal with risk risk mitigation also need constant monitoring uh, earlier i was using transfer as a technique but i don't need it now i may change it correct that's where monitoring is also equally important step so what we have understood so far the risk management steps let's revise it once again the risk identification we do to swot or event identification we uh, map the risk to know how important that risk is but what will be the consequences of it what would be the impact on the company the third step was to mitigate the risk we deal with risk through tara technique and last we use the word monitoring we monitor the risk now all these four steps called risk now, once management we understood steps. the risk management steps it's time for us to understand who has what responsibility when it comes to risk management so let me put into three verticals let's talk about board or charged with governance then we have management and then we have internal auditor so all three have their own roles and responsibility when it comes to risk management uh the starting with board board has oversight role when i say oversight role they sit on top and they work on the steps of risk management for example what should be the risk appetite of a company how will the risk be management uh, the risk be managed what the overview of the risk management steps everything will be done at this stage called board so board has primary oversight role when it comes to risk management how will this happen what is the sufficient risk management for the company as of now what is the vision for the company what kind of risk may arise in future all this is task of board right so they sit on top and they follow the oversight role the management has active role in risk management when i say active role they are the one who gonna manage the risk so they will make sure the risk management exists working efficiently and smoothly and if it fails say control risk arise our detection risk arise they are the one to be blamed for so management makes sure that the steps what has been decided by board will be followed and not only followed in the beginning but it works smoothly and efficiently so that the company can do a better decision making they can improve their efficiency so that's the task of management and then then comes internal auditor so internal auditors primary responsibility is never to manage the risk their task is to do the consulting and when i say do the consulting they evaluate they consult so that the company can strengthen their risk management also the internal auditors make sure the company is uses cosos erm framework so they look at the company's current situation and they do the consulting accordingly here we have the implementation guidance 2120 which deals with this here the ca and his staff the chief audit executive and his staff will for do first thing is to understand the company when i say understand the company it includes understanding the management's risk management steps understanding the mission and vision of the company the objectives nature and of the work also the company's current risk management processes so that the first step where we as an auditor starts our work first we understand once you get a grip of the company as to what kind of an environment it operates into you understand the related risk as well and then our task starts to evaluate evaluate whether the company follows coso erm framework or not how strong the company's risk management is whether it works smoothly or not on how can we strengthen it 
So time to time, CA sits with board. They do sit in risk committees. So risk committees have their own meetings time to time where CA sits and they do advice management, how to strengthen it. Wherever they see certain risk which a management should have seen by now and the management is not able to see, the CA can advise them. So that's a major task of internal auditor. So if we talk about role and responsibility, board has an oversight role, the management has an active role to manage the risk, they make sure the risk management happen and internal auditors follow the implementation standard or implementation guidance 2120, which works where CAs read to evaluate and help management strengthening the risk management. So that's the role and responsibility of various people, various layers inside the organization. Now we have understood the terms related to risk. We understood the risk management steps. We have understood who has what responsibility when it comes to risk management. Now it's time for us to understand two more important concepts called COSO's ERM framework and ISO 31000. So let's talk about it now. Now it's time for us to understand another important concept called COSO's ERM framework. COSO stands for Committee of Sponsoring Organization. ERM stands for Enterprise Risk Management. And of course, it's a framework. COSO has a lot of other framework. COSO has different recommendations, principles related to internal controls, internal audit. In this particular segment, we are talking about COSO's ERM framework. Here, we are just focusing on the risk management part. So, one, let's understand ERM first. ERM, Enterprise Risk Management, focuses on one particular element called culture. Culture of an organization. Now, if I talk about culture of an organization, it sounds like a generic concept, which is actually not. And of course, you might be wondering as to what culture has to do with risk management. It has a very, very big impact on the company. Correct? So first, let's understand the word called culture. Culture has two elements, internal and external, right? Internal culture may be defined by attitude of management, the reward system, the core values of the company. The external system might include the regulatory environment, expectation of customer, expectation of stakeholders, Everything is called external culture. In the combination of internal and external culture, we get something called risk management. Culture has a very, very big role to play when it comes to ERM implementation. If Remember that ethics always flow from top to bottom, never from bottom to top. So the top should have a, they should set a tone of ethical culture or a risk proper risk governance at the top and then only it will flow rightly in the bottom. So culture includes a lot of other element. Say company's mission. Mission means what they are doing, what's their core value. When I say vision, what is their aspiration, where they want to go. So company's mission, vision, goals, objectives, everything is part of the culture. And that's where ERM will be defined. The COSO's ERM framework checks whether the ERM works properly or not. So COSO's ERM framework is more like a, a guidance as to how to go about it, how to implement it properly so that the company can manage their risk well. ERM has five important components, right? So component-wise, five components we have. Or ERM, which primarily again uh, routes through or, or, or is the uh, culture. Across. It includes the the tone at the top, the different roles of management, where the top level, the board has a role of oversight. Rate. The business functions have their own role. The management has a responsibility to implement the risk management, 
and of course there is a uh, the auditors who evaluate right so we can call them three line of defense now let's define what are these three line of defense right the company the first layer is owners of risk who are the owners of the risk of course the top management who has oversight role who will decide how arm will be uh, implemented inside the company whether it works on the proper policies or not so this is the first layer second layer is the business functions how will this erm be implemented so they give the guidance how the second layer business function will be saying whether it is being implemented or not if it is work smoothly or not and the third line third layer is assurance who comes under assurance of course us internal auditors so that's exactly what we discussed before also that's where erm is three layers the first layer it includes owners risk they are the owner of the risk they have to decide whether erm is being implemented or not second layer includes all the business functions management the third layer includes assurance right so this is how erm's component is being used we as an auditor our task is to evaluate whether the coso crm framework has been implemented or not whether it works smoothly or not and if it is doesn't work smoothly they advise management they advise board that's how erm's coso framework comes into picture here also we have a similar step what we discussed before it includes the risk uh, identification heat map and remember the erm is not implemented for certain functions only or let's say only for top it is for every unit sub unit branch division sub division so that everybody will be covered under erm framework if you just go to google you will find uh, and google uh, coso's erm framework you will find a cubicle kind of thing which is really uh, catching and of course easier to remember so my suggestion to you as a student is you can just go through that understand it nicely and elaborate in exam right once you understand it the terms of examination question may not be a hitch generally i have seen students struggling with erm framework especially in examination so my suggestion is don't overthink when the question come stick to what five components you studied you should know those five components nicely and of course there are 20 principles as well right so uh, if you really ask me i would say uh, some part of erm framework is understanding and some of them is more of mugging up you should remember the component and the principles and of course you should know how to implement it and of course you should also know who's having what responsibility when it comes to uh, erm framework right so examination point of view uh, i would suggest just focus more on the coso crm framework right now it's time for us to move to the last section of our session and where we will talk about iso 31000 a lot of people are talking about iso 31000 these days a lot of companies are implementing iso 31000 so it's time for us to understand what exactly is it and how now it's time for it. us to understand another important concept called iso 31000 so far isos were there for service industries it was there related to quality but now the risk management also has an iso called iso 31000 it's a relatively uh, a newer initiate however it is really increasing these days when a company says that their ISO 31000 uh, complied, it gives more confidence to stakeholders. Imagine a lot of shareholders put in their money inside the company. A lot of stakeholders have various interests inside the company. And when company says they are risk compliant, their ISO 31000 complied, it definitely boosts up the confidence of stakeholders. So ISO 31000 primarily focuses on value creation why company takes risk so they can in increase the game but if a company have a stronger risk management process 
then only company can enhance the value value in terms of uh, the money in value in terms of what they give to stakeholders and so on and the best part of iso 31000 is that it's a principle based approach a principle based approach is an approach which is customized whereas the rule based theory is a theory which one size fits all that means no customizations can be done for example sox is a rule based theory but iso 31000 is principle based that means companies can adopt and they customize customize as per their need as per their industry as per their country and so on so iso 1 31000 has 11 principles and five elements right so these are key few numbers which you have to remember 11 principles of iso 31000 are majorly related to principle based theory for example that they has to be value creation inside the company it has to be customized the company has to follow the integrity at all level it has to be part and parcel of the processes and so on so those kind of 11 principles are there in iso 31000 then iso 31000 has its own five elements also right and again iso 31000 also talks about same thing that the board has an oversight role the management has a key duty to implement and auditors have a responsibility to evaluate so same thing what we have been talking about again and again same thing is been talked about in iso 31000 also in iso 31000 three important things needs to be remembered so let's talk about those three important things now so now let's talk about erm 31000's assurance approaches who has an assurance uh, duty of course as an auditor we have a duty for assurance right so assurance approaches comes as first element called key principle under key principle we see whether the 11 principles have been followed or not right so iso 31000 has 11 main principles we have to give assurance whether these 11 principles have been followed or have not been followed right so that is first thing and then comes process element so there are seven component um i think by mistake i wrote five components or five elements in the last slide but just ignore it seven components basically which we have to make sure that it's been followed right so basically uh, the auditor will see whether 11 key principles have been followed whether the seven important elements or components have been followed and finally comes maturity model the maturity model says that the risk management process matures matures with time so there are certain stages when you implement you learn so you learn with the environment and gradually your risk management model becomes mature and that's what you call maturity model right under maturity model let's discuss something called cmm under cmm or what called capability maturity model there are certain things to be discussed so let's discuss the capability maturity model everything matures with time so is the risk management so that's where we talk about cmm now so as we understand as we discussed in the beginning that the main core of iso 31000 is to focus on the value part whether it creates value or whether it enhances the value or not right so cmm model has certain part the first is initial at initial stage some processes are defined right so you have just started with risk management you have just defined few processes few are there few aren't there and that's called initial at repeatable stage what we decided initial we try to strengthen them so the basic elements are focused we try to strengthen them at defined level we define the standards so we are making it more mature by creating a standard that this is what is required and you have to follow it at managed level we define the perform performance appraisal kind of criterias how will you define whether the risk management is happening or not 
right? So at managed level, we appraise it. And finally, at optimizing level, we try to make it better. We create more value out of it. We optimize it, right? So this is what all CMM steps are. Initial, repeatable, defined, managed, and optimized. Everything matures with time. The risk management also takes its time. And that's what we call maturity model. So that is what we have discussed about ISO 31000. And primarily that's all about this chapter called risk management. So we have understood various things in this chapter. We understood certain key terms. We understood the steps related to risk management, the role and responsibility of various stakeholders. We talked about COSO CRM framework and finally ISO 31000. As I said in the beginning, from examination point of view, the concept carries a lot of weightage. And of course, these components will be checked in other chapters also. When you'll be studying more other chapters, you'll find these risk management, uh, ISO 31000, it keeps coming in all the topics, right? So it makes sense for us to concentrate here and devote more time. Uh, once you are done with this video, once you are done with the reading of your textbook, I would strongly recommend you to go and practice the questions. Questions are there in the textbook. You may have your own supporting study uh, bank also. The more practice you do on this concept, the better your concept will become. It of course holds true for any concept, but here it is slightly more required because if they give you scenario-based question risk management, sometimes students really, really get lost. So that's my recommendation. Right. So that's all about my chapter called Risk Management. If you want to subscribe for full video series, you log on to www.cartage.com or you can contact us at given number. Right. So let's meet up once again with a new topic. Till then, stay tuned. Thank you so much.